Good morning. How y'all doing? <laughs> Welcome to the second True Blood panel brought to you by the Dragon Ball Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Track. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Is this on? Testing, testing. Welcome to the second True Blood panel here at DragonCon 2012. Thank you all for coming out. <laughs> Brought to you by the DragonCon Dark Fantasy Track and Netherworld Haunted House. First, in college, he studied French and physics before settling on acting. He now plays Sam Merlot. It's Sam Trapp. <laughs> Uh, 
They were asking me how many Arlene's I've seen dressed up here, and I said, I think I saw four yesterday. I, was, I, I Usually it's, it's dudes that dress up as Arlene, which <laughs> I take as a full compliment. <laughs> boys. Um, but yeah, I've seen some, but if, if you are dressed as me, I'd love to see you uh, later when we do uh, the autograph signing and stuff. So come by, say hi. I've been taking pictures of y'all and tweeting them. <laughs> and if you want to ask questions, line up in the aisles. We'll have people with microphones. I want to start out talking about some of your backgrounds before you got on the show. Sam, you studied physics, you studied French. What made you want to transition from that into acting? Uh, God, you know, I, I uh, yeah, I went to college as a, as a, as a physics major, which was a, a good idea, but I, was, I wasn't smart enough for that. I mean, I definitely figured that out quick. Uh, I, it was weird. I, I got into, um, I just did a play my, the last semester of college. Uh, a friend of mine who's now a musician who used to be an actor, um, and I was a musician before an actor, so we sort of switched places. But he just, he just, you know, sort of said, you should, you know, why don't you audition for this play? And I did, and it was the last semester of college, and, and I'd already applied for graduate schools, and, you know, and, uh, and, I, and I loved it, and just said, forget graduate school, I'm just going to go to New York. So, I literally went to New York on a bus with a suitcase, uh, and ended up in Penn Station, and was, you know, and then, uh, yeah, and then I, I uh, you know, it was a slow process. <laughs> Started doing theater. What about theater appealed to you? What, what made you say, this is what I really should be doing? Well, I think it was mostly, I was already on the, the East Coast, so I went to New York. If I had been on the West Coast, I would have gone to California, I think. So, I, you know, theater, I had already done a couple of plays, and, um, you know, theater is, is, uh, is incredible. It's, it's so exciting to be out in front of a live audience, and, and you get to rehearse, the rehearsal process is really fun getting to, you know, do scenes a bunch of times and figure things out, and, um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, all right, uh, very sick, don't touch your neighbor, or do, uh, but, uh, yeah, working in New York is, is so much fun, so it was a blast. And Joe, you were an athlete in high school, how much did you fit into the traditional jock stereotypes? Not at all. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I was a jock. I was, I was a captain of the football team, the basketball team, and the volleyball team. But I, I couldn't stand the jocks. You know, I couldn't have a conversation with them. They were kind of, they'd pick on my friends who were, I was friends with all the artistic kids. And uh, the jocks would pick on the artistic kids, and I'd get into fights with the jocks over the, you know, Take your fucking hands off of him, fuck, you know, we get into that kind of stuff, you know? And uh, so I was always like fighting with the other captains of the team, you know? Like, so I had two, it was like I had two sets of friends, you know? And I had these friends from, you know, from athletics that I was associated with by default. Um, but then I had these other friends who were really, really good friends, like my, my real friends. And, um, uh, somewhere towards the end of high school, I took a couple acting classes. I took acting classes as a senior, so I was in the freshman level acting classes as this big jock senior, and uh, and the teachers kept begging me to try out for the high school musical, and I was like, give me a break, man. Are you, are you kidding me? Like, I have to sing? And they're like, just sing Happy Birthday. I was like, get out of here. And, but they, you know, bugged me and bugged me until I did it, and um, I, I got the part. And... Uh, and then wound up doing Oklahoma my senior year. <laughs> and then I wound up getting a scholarship to go to Carnegie Mellon to study classical theater. Um, and now I'm a werewolf. <laughs> and Carrie, growing up in Macon, Georgia, what were your experiences like in theater? Did you do a lot of theater as a child? Maybe write your own stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm what they call a lifer, you know, I knew the first time I got on stage at like age eight in the community theater in Macon that, that I, was, I was in my element. And um, I, I loved the, you know, the make-believe, I loved that. I took it very seriously, my make-believe. Uh, I, I remember one of the first plays I was in was, um, you know, it was just a children's theater production of Cinderella. 
but I was cast as the fairy godmother, and I had this t-shirt that said FGM on it, and I wanted an ass pad, and I wanted glasses, and I wanted my hair up, so I was already doing the whole character actor thing, the whole transforming into other people thing, and luckily um, my parents were very supportive. My brother, John, is also a professional actor, and so I, our, my, my parents were just really um, very encouraging, and I, I I said to my mom, probably when I was maybe 12, you know, I said, hey, do you think I could do this acting as a living? And she was like, well, honey, somebody's got to do it. I don't know why I can't be you. <laughs> so, thanks to my parents, you know. And Nelson, you're, you're a Marine. How do you Woo! transition from the Marines to Lafayette? Little <laughs> 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 dogs in the house. No, um... Simper five, motherfuckers. Um, uh, you just do, I mean. <laughs> um, being a Marine doesn't mean you can't be an actor, so I guess I just do. You know, there's some Lafayette's in the Marine Corps. <laughs> um, so yeah. Is there anything from your military experiences that you bring to your acting? I'm sure there is. <laughs> Discipline. Discipline. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Sam, you did something for Us Weekly, 25 things that people don't generally know about you. You said you're a vocabulary nerd. What is one of your favorite, more obscure words? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not going to be able to think of one now. So. <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know. You know, I, I got... The reason I, I said that was... Uh, I, uh, I don't, for some reason, uh, in high school, I, I, uh, I, you know, you have to take the SAT, and I decided I needed to get a much better score. And so I just started studying vocabulary words, like cue cards, and I just got really into it. And, um, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's how that came about. And I'm going to come up with a word, it's going to happen later. I swear. If the rest of you were to do one of those kind of things people don't really know about your articles, what is something that you would put that you think people don't generally know about you? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> well, I was just having a conversation in the hall with one of the promoters and he was like, so Joe, were you sci-fi or comic books or what? And I guess something probably people wouldn't know is that I am like a huge, huge, huge geek trapped in like a football player's body. Uh, so like, y'all are my people, you know? Uh, I was going down the list of guests, and I was like, Tracy Hickman, I read Dragonlance growing up, and, you know, and then it was like, you know, I hung out with Stan Lee the other day, and we were talking about, about all of that, you know, it's, it's just, so I was, I mean, I was all things, my father had to hide my Stephen King books to get me to stop reading them and go outside and play, and, you know, I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was a kid. That was what I wanted to do. And so, um, so I think that's probably something that people wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't think. But uh, I think I've been manifesting this, this werewolf sci-fi thing since I was a little, little boy on Halloween. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if people know, but I'm also a, a director and a producer. Woo! Yeah, I have a production company and I um, actually have a film. Um, I've directed uh, two feature films and a short and a, a pilot for a web series. And it's, uh, I really love um, being able to exercise all of my creative muscles, you know, because when you're acting, you just have to get inside the skin of the one character. But when you're directing, you get to, 
you know, get inside the skin of all of them. And um, I have a film that uh, is coming out on October 19th that I directed. It's called That's What She Said. <laughs> and uh, it stars Anne Heche and Marcia DeBonis and Alia Shawkat. I like to call it a chick flick that's not for pussies. <laughs> If you don't like it, you're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is silly, but all my all my close close friends talk about me about this. But I have a sock addiction. <laughs> I, I I literally have a fetish for socks. I go sock shopping. I have, like. A million pairs of socks. Every place I go, I buy socks. And, if, and like, I, I, I sock watch. Like, I look at people's socks and I'm like, That's, oh, those are nice. Those are too low. I got those socks. Those are polka dots. Oh, I like those. I gotta go get some of those socks. Why does he got on those socks? Why does he got on those socks? <laughs> yeah, and I'm the only one that wears socks with sandals. <laughs> What you wearing today? Oh, just plain white socks, but they have the yellow tips. And I love socks with the yellow tips. I do not know why, but. Whatever works for you. <laughs> Sam, you've been playing actually two roles this season. You played Merlot, but you also played Luna Skinwalking as Merlot. Yeah, yeah, I did. Where you're on the couch with yourself. Tell me yeah. about that scene. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I read the script, uh, I was excited. They told me I was going to get to do it, and then I read the script, and there was that scene where I was on the couch with myself. And at the end, it said, yeah, he gets, he looks in her eyes, his eyes, and he gets closer and closer, and he's gonna kiss, and I was like, no! No! It's like, it's so weird. Um, but, uh, yeah, but it, it was, it was, that was, a, it was a hard one. I did Tommy the year before, I did Marshall Allman. Yeah, but, but, uh, Janina's tough because she doesn't really have a, a lot to hook into. She doesn't have an accent. She's a woman, you know, so that's definitely different. Uh, obviously, but I didn't just want to do a woman, I wanted to do her, and it was, uh, it was tricky. You know, the thing about that scene, though, um, that was actually the episode that Stephen Moyer directed, and uh, they had this um, steady, this steady motion camera that, that moved the same way every time, and it was this big machine, so that, so that they could put us both in, and it would shoot it with me in, then with the double, and then without us there, and all this stuff. But it was really loud, and we did the rehearsal, and uh, I said, Steven, man, this, we got a problem with this machine, it's too loud. And he goes, yeah, mate, you're gonna have to loop it. And I was like, I'm gonna have to loop it? He said, yeah, mate. And I was like, oh, man. So I had to go back in the studio, I had to do both parts, and then I had to go in the studio, and then, you know, in the, in the looping room, and just and do, and do the voices, too. So in that scene, I had to actually go back and do the whole scene again in the booth. And, and loop it, so it was crazy. Wow. It's a lot of work. A lot of work in that stuff. Uh, it was worth it. Yeah. It was fun. It was, it was, it's always fun to, to do that. And you mentioned Stephen Moyer directing an episode. Carrie, you were just saying you were, you've were you been directing a film. Would you, any of you want to direct an episode of True Blood? Yeah, I mean, I would love to. Um, at least, I would love to just shadow, um, just follow one of the directors around and, and see what it's like from the very first day that that person comes on to the project all the way to the final cut just because when you're an actor and you're doing tv you know we just come in after all that pre-production stuff has been done and we just come in and do our and our contribution and then we move on but there's so many other things that go into it and so i'm you know i would love to do that i don't know um i don't know if i would know how to direct all the you know um the big the big action sequences and, and that kind of thing, because I, I think that takes a real skill. Um, but we have such an incredible um, camera crew, and 
the producers and, and everybody who, you would not believe how many people there are standing on a set when you, when you come to shoot your one little, little thing. Um, it takes a lot to, to do that. So I, I feel like if, if they, I would be in really good hands if, if they would let me do that. So I'm gonna check it out. Not very many women directors in TV, and I'm, I'd like to change that. Joe, would you ever want to direct? Yes. <laughs> Have you directed before? Uh, well, actually, I mean, in high school, uh, I think theater club was a little too daunting for, for Jock Joe in high school. And, uh, but my, my high school had a TV studio, and you could take TV class, and we had big analog editing machines with the tapes, and, you know, before computer editing, obviously, and we had... Um, cameras with teleprompters so the kids didn't have to learn their lines I just stay after school and I would type in everybody's lines and uh, I wrote these I would take the cameras home on the weekends and I would write these um, movies for me and my friends I'd sleep with a pad and a pen next to the bed and I'd write these big kung fu mafia martial art movies <laughs> and everybody in high school wanted to be in them and we figured out how to make homemade squibs so we take like cookie tins, <clears throat> we take these cookie tins like over our hearts, and we get firecrackers and condoms full of Cairo syrup with red food coloring, and we like stick the hand in with the lighter on the firecracker and keep the camera on and like light it, take your hand up, bang, and you know, we, yeah, we found out how to make kneecaps blast off. And we were trying to work on like shooting in the head, and that was just getting a little bit crazy. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so that's kind of how I got into acting. I kind of backdoored into acting from amateur filmmaking. And because of those movies, all my friends I made movies were like, dude, you should be an actor. And I was like, shut up, dude. You know, <laughs> obviously, you know, here we are. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, getting back into that, definitely. And El Sada, I know you have experience as a playwright. How much experience do you have directing? Uh, I'm actually directing a play right now um, in Chicago called Who Do Love, written by Katori Hall. Um, I would never want to direct an episode of True Blood. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's too big. It has so many <laughs> elements. And it's just a big, 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 big show. Plus, I see how stressed the other directors are. I'm like, <laughs> I'm good on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and one day I would like to, to be like Carrie Preston, the director Aww. of um, a short film. Short film. I'll direct some short films, but that don't count. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I directed a documentary. You know. um, yeah, I just directed a documentary uh, that we are sending to Sundance this week. Hopefully. What's it called? It's called Damn Wonderful. There's a spike in suicides among young LGBTQ individuals so this documentary is basically we have six LGBT young people who talk about their lives in such a way that they make sure the world knows that who they are is relevant they're special they're not a mistake suicide is not an option and and they proclaim themselves to be damn wonderful so yeah what do you want to do with it? Do you want to get it widely distributed? 